Let's do this. So initially, I wanted to make something like this, a traffic light in the clouds and maybe some birds or a plane actually stopped at this traffic light. But as it turns out, it's really hard to make good looking clouds in Blender. So I had to drop this idea pretty early on and take the render in a completely different direction. I did learn one thing about volumetrics though. There's this option called step rate render in the volume panel of the render properties tab. Decrease it to something like 0.5 or 0.35 to add a ton of detail into your volumetrics. I mean, look how big a difference it makes to this whole cloud here. So yeah, keep this slider in mind when you're making something like this in the future. But this was an absolute failure. I think the biggest mistake from my end was I went into this scene with no plan at all. I had very few reference images and I'm not even at a level where I can just come up with great ideas just like that, you know? And I think that's where AI art generators like my journey and stable diffusion can come real handy. I could have just entered a prompt like a third person view of a plane high up above in the clouds, something like that, and use the generated images and its different variations as a starting point. Not to copy it shot for shot, of course, but take small ideas from each of these images and make something of my own. Let's talk more about it at the end of the video. For now, let's get to the actual breakdown. Also, let me address this new look. I mean, there's nothing to address. I think I look fantastic. And I can see you are turned on a little bit as well. I mean, it's the default cube with a mustache and a sexy ass Indian accent. It's gonna be hard to keep your pants on. I can understand that, I know, and I'm really sorry, but it had to be done. It had to be done. Let's not get deviated, and let's just get down to business. <laughs> Whoa. Damn, damn. Okay, so first, you block out the scene, Put simple shapes and simple materials and frame the initial shot to your liking. I put a traffic signal like shape in a huge water body. Water isn't that hard to make in Blender. In my case, I just used a Musgrave texture to drive the normal of a glass material. To make it a little more advanced, you can use the wave texture to make these small ripples and a noise texture to make these small foam-like particles. I learned it all from an Ian Hubert video on his Patreon, which I seriously recommend trying if you haven't already. I can't obviously show you the note setup that he made in the tutorial because that would be kind of awful to do. So if you have $3 to spare, I would just recommend you subscribe to his Patreon. But to be honest, just the Musgrave texture alone is gonna be more than enough for most of you guys. Trust me on that. Next, I put a volumetric cube in the scene. Along with that, I used a nice overcast HDRI from Polyhaven just to set up an overall vibe for the scene right from the get-go. I used the easy HDRI add-on that makes fidgeting around with HDRI as a breeze. So download that if you haven't already. Then it was time to put the subject to the scene in, which was a car model I downloaded from Sketchfab. I really wanted to make everything on my own for this scene, you know, just as a challenge. But then you have to think about what your purpose was with this artwork. Was it to learn how to make a car or was it to tell a good story using a car, right? And that, ladies and gentlemen, was a masterclass on how to convince yourself into believing that you're some kind of a visionary artist when all you are is a cheat and a hack and nothing else. Okay, now that most of the blockout stage was done, it was time to start working on the individual assets, starting with the traffic light. Traffic lights aren't super hard to make, it's just cylinders inserted and extruded into the right shape. And with that, you add some tiny details like the bolt holder part, then a half cut sphere to make the glass part, a simple cube to make the back plate, and a half cut cylinder to make that funky traffic light cap, and some screws and bolts around the corner to finish it off. And it should basically be done. Now to make the LEDs that are inside, I just downloaded this image and plugged it into the emission slot of the principal shader, and then also made this simple procedural grid-like shape that you usually see on the glass part of a traffic light. I made this using two perpendicular wave textures and plugged that into the bump node to get that diamond grid type effect. Here's a screenshot of that node setup if you want to recreate it. I did try creating a procedural setup for the LEDs as well, using the same wave texture node setup that I just showed you, but it wasn't looking great. It could have if I spent a little more time and effort on it, but why would I do that when I've already got something that's working? That too with almost no effort at all. So no, we stick with the lazy method. After that, you just put a dark scratchy metal texture on everything, duplicate it twice, work a little bit on the pole, and have a quick and dirty traffic light. By the way, what did the traffic light say to the car? said, don't look, I'm changing.
Okay, here's a time lapse of me making a security camera. Let's go. Now, let's make one of those timers you see on a traffic light. Again, super easy to make. All you need is a cube for it. Then you make one strip of LED and shape it into an eight. And you're almost done. I put that procedural dot texture I made earlier on this LED strip. So that didn't go to waste. And with that, the timer was also done. Next, I made some initial traffic sign boards using image textures from unsplash.com. Made some wires using the geo cables add on. And while I was in that general area, I made a concrete base for the traffic light as well. Now I found this amazing photo of a wall full of stickers. So I put that on the traffic poles as well. I also added a control box I made using this image texture and a bunch of wires around it made just out of curves. Next, I spent a little bit of time making custom sign boards like water will or will of the water or blood boulevard because initially I had the intention of putting sharks beside the car and then also a classic one interstate H2O that looks like H20. Needless to say, I was pretty proud of these names. To top it all off, I also found a caution wet floor signboard texture that I placed right at the bottom of the pole. And I hope you didn't miss the no lifeguard on duty signboard as well. Then I made what I recently learned is called a rescue buoy, for which I just used a Taurus model and extruded it in in some parts. Then hung it up using the same curve wires I had made earlier. I also quickly made a screw and spread it around wherever it made sense. Next, I used the Monster Mash website to make a 3D model out of a photo of a seagull. And I think it turned out better than I expected it to. It works great for something that you want to place far in the background. And until AI enables us to generate 3D models from just text prompts, which doesn't seem that far in the future, I think Monster Mash does a pretty decent job. It's understandably bound to have some texture stretching issues though, which can easily be fixed with the clone stamp brush in the texture paint mode. After that, I started working on a boat motor that I intended to place behind the car. And I don't think I've ever made something so ugly. It's, it's just, it's hard to even look at it. It's just disgusting. But from that monstrosity, came out an awesome idea. I was serving through Sketchfab for some boat motors so I could replace this cursed one. And I just randomly came across this amazing boat model. And I took inspiration from it and made something similar for my own watermobile. To make it, I took the middle wheel disc part of the tire and built a simple turbine-like structure around it. I initially placed it to the left of the car and used a bunch of wireframe modifier to give it that metal mesh look. After that, I learned how to easily make a rope by watching a video by Blender Secrets. This channel, man, it's just a gold mine of information and it's such a great idea for a YouTube channel as well. I'm just a huge fan. A huge, huge fan. The rope was made in a way that would follow a curve. So if you deleted all the vertices and selected the draw mode, you could literally draw a rope wherever you needed it. And I had the intention of putting a lot of rope all around the car. Because if you look at boats, they have ropes everywhere. So that's where this idea came from. Next, I made one of those capsule looking buoys to put behind the car. Along with that, I also made some boat paddles to put on the side of the car and also duplicated the Taurus buoy I had made earlier and separated the rubber part of the tire to put them at the back. But they were not looking great and the car just felt overcrowded at this moment. So I later deleted them. Also way back, I had also deleted three out of the four signs I had made in Photoshop because that was overkill as well. It was kind of painful to do, but it had to be done. It's almost like you had to kill your own child. I think that's the only equivalent comparison I can think of. Yeah. Next, I made a roof rack for the car because the top part of the car was looking kind of empty. And then unexpectedly came the most difficult part of the render, which was making a mechanical connection between all the wheel structures 
And at first I thought I'll try to make something that would actually work from an engineering perspective. But who was I kidding? That's just way too much work and can get way too complicated, way too quick. So here's a time lapse of me doing whatever the f I want. Hell yeah. In summary, I did three important things in the time lapse. First, I added a cylindrical back turbine just below the car. I think that was a good detail. Next, I moved the main turbine to the back of the car because it was just not looking good on the side. And lastly, I replaced the car tires with the same turbine like wheel structure. That's it. Now to add some final details, I added a rope running around the car like you usually see in boats. I added a fishing net to the back, placed a bike on the roof rack and tied it around with some rope. Place the tire buoy in between the net and the capsule. Fix the tail light up a bit because they were looking a bit weird. Tried a bunch of materials on the chassis, but I think the dark maroon color fit the vibe of the scene the best. Add some noise to the car paint and some dirt to the windshield. Place some ducks beside the car because this is a funky world where ducks also stop at the traffic lights. Add some mountains and trees in the background. Changed up the number plate of the car. And finally, added some dynamic paint effects on the water. Let me quickly show you how I did that in case you're not familiar with dynamic paint. You add a plane that is going to be a water surface. You add a bunch of subdivisions on it. Add a cube that is going to affect the water. Select the cube and go to the physics properties tab and select dynamic paint and change type to brush and then click on add brush. Do the same thing for the plane. Just leave the type as canvas and click on add canvas. Finally, change the surface type to waves and you're done. Press play to start the animation. And once you do that, you should see ripples whenever you dip the cube in the water. The more subdivisions you add, finer the ripples will be. So I did the same thing with the car and the ducks as well and got some nice looking ripples. And to finish it all up, I did some color grading in Lightroom and that was it. It was finally done. And this is how it turned out. And I think it looks good enough. I feel like if I had planned the scene a little better, I could have done a better job. And again, that's where I think AI art generators can come really handy because it's hard to find references for such concepts and coming up with your own ideas from scratch is mostly a gamble. It might turn out good, but mostly it doesn't if you're inexperienced like me. And I think if I would have just used these AI tools to conjure up some reference images, I could have done a better job. Actually, you know what? Let's try something right now. Maybe a prompt like a car that can run on water. And this is what Mid Journey came up with. Pretty cool, I think, for a starting point. And you have to agree, this was a pretty shitty prompt. Imagine if you spend a little more time and effort on this, you could really get some crazy ideas to at least get started, right? I couldn't because I had run out of free credits on most of these platforms because I've been prompting some crazy shit the past few days. Let's not even go there. Let's just not. Also, Dolly has this awesome feature where you can upload your artwork and will generate similar variation based off of it. And that's a great way to get started as well. Just make a quick concept of a scene and you can put it in Dolly and it will generate more variations from it for you. So yeah, that's it. Really excited about the future of 3D. I don't think we should be afraid of AI infiltrating our space as a lot of people are. I think what it's actually going to enable us to do is just focus on the story and not worry about technical things like making a model or animating something or finding a good texture or whatever we spend most of our time doing while making a scene. Once it does get to a stable state, I think we all will be able to make so much more and so much more quickly as well. Believe it or not, this artwork alone took almost 30 plus hours to make, which is way too long. With better AI tools in the future, I might have been able to make it in a few hours probably. So yeah, the next few months should be really exciting for us all. Just a final point, after watching the Corridor Crew video, I wanted to try compositing my render with these AI tools. What I mean by that is, I wanted to put this image in an AI generator and just type, turn this art into a digital painting in the style of a particular artist, or maybe a GTA 5 style artwork, or maybe even an anime style artwork. 
which would allow me to stylize this render in any way I wanted in just a few clicks. And I know there are other ways to do this as well right now, but I feel like AI would be able to do a much better job. But I haven't been able to figure it out. Stable diffusion is kind of unstable for weak computers. So I'm trying to find a solution for it. So stick around if you're interested in something like that. Because I will get to the bottom of this. But yeah, that's it. Video's over. Go away. Start making something. Meanwhile, I have some important things to take care of. So let me get to it. Get the f*** out. Damn. Now to add some final details, I added a row. Shoot. Ah. Extruded in in some parts. Extruded it in. Extruded it in. Extruded it. Extruded it in. Extruded it in. Is this the real life? Is it just fantasy? Call it a landslide. Da da dee 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 da da dee. Open your eyes. Look up at the sky and see. I'm just a poor boy. I need no sympathy because I'm easy come, easy go. Little high, little low. And even the rain goes. Doesn't really matter to me. To be dee 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 Mama just killed him. What?